Hello everyone. It's been seven years, so I figured it's time to upgrade the old video rendering computer. This machine has performed very well and output some of the largest projects I've ever worked on. This new computer rig is for 8K, 4K video editing, After Effects, and Blender 3D. It works for gaming, but the components were chosen to augment video and graphics rendering. This video is not intended as a PC build instruction video. Uh, I'd like to do something like that in the future, but I needed this machine up and running so I could get back to work. What follows is simply documentation of an upgrade, what components I used, and what issues I ran into. I started with the CPU. For the past seven years, I've been using a six core Core i7 4930K, and it has been fantastic. I've used it to render 4K video and After Effects animations. I chose to upgrade to the Core i9-9940X 14-core CPU, which is more than double the threads of the previous CPU at about the same speed. For the motherboard, I had to get an LGA 2066 socket to match the CPU, so I got the ASUS X299 Deluxe 2. I really wanted a motherboard with sufficient NVMe storage availability, and this board has three M.2 slots, one of which I'm using for my boot disk, a one terabyte Samsung EVO NVMe drive. I've been plenty happy with uh, 32 gigabytes of RAM for several years now, but since I don't upgrade that often, I went for 64 gigabytes this time. One important thing I came across, uh, when you're sourcing parts for a build, make sure you check the specs of the motherboard. I nearly bought two sticks of 32 gigabytes, but this motherboard can only handle sticks of 16 gigabytes. Uh, luckily, I caught this before I hit the purchase button and uh, saved myself a week or two of waiting for the right parts to arrive. I opted to go for an air-cooled CPU cooler this time. Uh, the previous machine had a Corsair all-in-one water block with a radiator, and it worked fine, but I'm pretty sure by the time I upgraded that uh, there wasn't any water left in the lines. This is easily fixed with some bare minimum maintenance, but in my research, I've seen that the air-cooled systems are just as effective as AIOs, and I figured I would save the new PC from an inevitable failure point. I purchased the Be Quiet um, TDP Dark Rock Pro 4 CPU cooler uh, with silent wings fans. Um, this is more to match the case. It was um, relatively inexpensive. It's during the build, it was an absolute pain to work around and install, but I'm happy to not have to worry about whether or not there's water in my cooling system. I was really excited to move from a full tower to a mid-sized tower. Uh, the old full tower is an NZXT H630, and the new case is the Be Quiet PureBase 500DX. For the old machine, I had six spinning hard drives that I used for RAID and storage, so I needed a tower that could hold all that hardware. And this thing was heavy. I hated moving it around whenever I had to. Noise has always been a concern, and the NZXT H630 was pretty good at keeping all that fan noise and spinning hard drive noise down. Uh, it has sound dampening foam on both side doors, and the fan mounts um, have solid covers so you don't hear that noise directly. I am noticing more fan noise from the new case, but that's because there aren't any covers in front of the fan mounts. It's really negligible though, I don't really notice it, and I'm happy to have better airflow. A part of this whole upgrade um, was me moving my main large storage needs to a small uh, NAS for backup. And I used a Synology Disk Station 218 Plus, which is using two 8 terabyte um, Western Digital Red hard drives in RAID 0 and connected over a gigabit network. This means that the new machine has nothing but solid state storage. I already mentioned the one terabyte NVMe SSD that I'm using it for the OS, but I also had three one terabyte SATA SSDs in the old tower that I'm transferring over. One of them used to be the old OS drive, but now I have two one terabyte project drives and one one terabyte scratch drive. There are two more NVMe slots and five more SATA slots available, but for now, four terabytes is plenty for me. I'm also transferring over my Titan X graphics card, which I'm still very happy with. And finally, I'm also porting over my old 1200 watt power supply. Uh, it's mega overkill, but I bought it years ago with the intention of overclocking and maybe a second graphics card, which I still have the option of doing. There were a few benchmarks I was curious to try 
you know, between the old and the new builds. And there's an obvious improvement anytime you jump this high with new components. But I wanted to see just how much performance I was getting out of the new machine. So for this motherboard, when I went to go install Windows for the first time, uh, I kept getting an error and it would not let it go. And it took me the better part of a day to find the answer, which was you have to go into the BIOS and turn off any, basically any networking, turn off the wireless especially, until you install Windows and you can do a BIOS and firmware upgrade. This was a total pain. This was <laughs> probably the worst part of the project was not, not being able to continue. But it got fixed eventually and uh, everything's working fine now. Overall, I've been using the computer for over a week now. Everything's fantastic. Everything is fast. Um, I am very happy with the new build I have. 